Good afternoon. We're tracking a few rain showers in northeastern Kelowland. Those should die down as we head after sunset. Otherwise, clear skies overnight. 58 are Sioux Falls, 56 in Aberdeen, 58 in Pier, and 59 in Rapid City. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. Temperatures a lot like today. 76 Sioux Falls, 78 in Aberdeen, 83 in Pier, and 86 in Rapid City with some isolated thunderstorms possible. We'll take a closer look at those coming up. Kelowland's first set four starts right now. Kelloland Media Group. Kelloland News first at four. The Sioux Falls City Council met today to discuss the Riverline District, why the issue may ultimately come up to a vote. Plus, a massive storm swept across eastern Iowa yesterday. A look at the damage. And then later, providing some free entertainment to kids in Sioux Falls, how your family could catch a free movie this week. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. The City of Sioux Falls Council members discussed a number of issues today, including the new proposal for a convention center in the Riverline District. Many of the councilors say at the end of this process, the final decision should be a public vote. However, if the people of the city decide against a convention center, they still need to take into consideration the development of the Riverline District. Whether we believe in a convention center or not, this is going to be a major entrance point into downtown, especially when those viaducts are redone. And so we need to take into consideration, do we need to have that land available for development no matter what? Tonight on Kelloland News at 5, we'll hear about other topics the city councilors discussed, including the Delbridge collection and a potential new pool. Well, a new swimming pool sounds kind of inviting right now with the temperatures yeah. the way they are. Might be a good day to take a dip, Megan. It could be. Those temperatures actually near normal instead of the heat we had over the weekend. And we'll keep our temperatures near and slightly below normal as we head through the seven day forecast. Right now, some sunshine here in Sioux Falls. We're sitting at 81 degrees with that light north breeze. Now, as we head around our region, we do have some thicker clouds there in Aberdeen. Still at 80 degrees, though. And under those clouds, we are watching some rain showers. Nothing is severe. Our highest temperatures today since midnight. Southwestern South Dakota had near and slightly above normal temperatures, but they were the only ones. We only hit 81 in Sioux Falls and Aberdeen, 79 on the cool side there in Pierre, and 88 in Rapid City. Our winds have been pretty light right now at 5 to 15 miles an hour. We'll keep those light as we head overnight tonight and into the day tomorrow. Here is a look at those rain showers. No lightning right now. Nothing is severe. These are just producing some pockets of heavy rainfall and some stronger winds. That is what that green line between Leola, Aberdeen, back towards Groton. That is that wind coming out in front of those storms. And that is about it. Just a few light rain showers there by Mobridge as well. And a severe thunderstorm warning just to the south of Valentine. But that is continuing to move to the south. Now we could have some severe weather as we head through the rest of your afternoon and into this evening for south central and southeastern Kelowland. Better chances to see that severe weather down in Nebraska with that level two out of five risk in yellow. Strong winds and small hail going to be those main threats. Otherwise for tonight, clear skies, light winds, 58 or low Sioux Falls, 56 in Aberdeen, 58 in Pier and 59 in Rapid City. Tomorrow is going to be a little bit warmer in western South Dakota. Everyone with sunshine, light winds, and those temperatures in eastern Kelowland well below normal. Highs only in the 70s, 80s in central and western South Dakota with that chance of isolated thunderstorms. We'll take a look at what you can expect with those isolated thunderstorms in just a little bit. All right, Megan, 70s are going to feel fine. Thanks. Severe weather ripped through the Des Moines, Iowa area on Monday night, leaving behind downed power lines, toppled trees, and damaged homes. Thousands of people were without power following the storm. Todd Magel gives us an overview of the damage. The sirens weren't going off or anything, and then all of a sudden the wind was so bad it, it got scary. Sean Good said he could not believe what he saw after coming up from the basement. The strong winds ripped roofs off several homes in the neighborhood. Trees are down and cars are damaged. It's the worst tornado damage we saw in Urbandale during a drive through the Des Moines suburb. Never happened in town. In my 27 years of living in Iowa, in town, things like this don't happen, you know, and crazy. The tornado appeared to touch down in this area near 80th and Douglas and then moved southeast. 
A few miles away, there are blocks and blocks of downed trees, some crashing into roofs. The trees also downed countless power lines. Pete Hutchinson lost two pine trees at his Urbandale home. The storm came quick and the wind was tremendous. I don't know, but these pine trees and, you know, we have some some other hardwood trees, some, some hickory trees back there, and oak trees, and they were bending more than I've ever seen them bend. As the tornado moved farther south, it plowed through the area of 63rd and Hickman. David Porras lost a tree in a car rear window. I ran for cover. When I saw that, I didn't, I didn't, I just watched for a probably few seconds and run to the basement with my family, so to take cover because it was scary. That's all I can tell you now. Nearby, the winds tore the roof shingles off an apartment building. More down power lines blocked Hickman Road and parts of 63rd Street. And a gas leak forced people to evacuate an apartment building. We heard the sirens going off, then we just seen the roof blow through our window. We ran downstairs. I got my kids. We ran downstairs into a pass. The trees were going through the cars. It was pretty bad. The American Red Cross is in northwest Iowa and southeast South Dakota, providing people who were majorly impacted by the flood with financial assistance. The Red Cross reached out to people who appeared to have major damage. Those people were given time to talk one on one with a Red Cross member and go through their information to help determine if they qualify for financial assistance. The amount of money depends on how large the family is and how many donations come in. With the money, people can pay for prescriptions, a down payment, and more. Many of the people that we've identified will get a text message from the American Red Cross saying, come in, we want to help you in your recovery. And others who maybe have not been contacted, they need to also come in if they feel like they qualify for assistance, we'll find a place for them as well. If you do not qualify for financial assistance from the Red Cross, uh, you can still, uh, people can still give disaster relief supplies to help clean your home.